In this video, we're going to look at some ways to take count data and plot it using R. So we're going to take some raw data and transform it into something like this plot on the screen. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to build this, this plot from scratch. So the first step is we're going to go over to the Tidy Tuesdays R project page with volcano eruptions data. I'll put a link to this in the description below. And I'd encourage you to scroll down the page and select the line to read in the volcano data. So we're going to copy that line, we'll move over to R Studio, and we'll create a new R script. And our first step will be we're going to load the tidyverse packages into R so that we can work with data. Now if you don't have the tidyverse packages installed, if, if this produces an error, the standard way to install it is, you can see I'm typing down here, you can just run this command, install the packages, tidyverse, and then press enter, and then basically it will install the tidyverse packages for you. Okay, so now we've loaded the tidyverse packages. Now let's load our volcano data into R, and we'll have a look and see what our volcano data looks like. So we have the number of the volcano, we have the volcano name, the type of the volcano, the country and the region, and a bunch of other metrics on the volcano. Okay, so for the sake of this video, we are not going to look at a lot of this data. We're just going to zoom in on three particular columns. So we're going to look at uh, the we're going to look at the volcano type and the region. And we're also going to keep the volcano number as a unique identifier for that volcano. Okay, so the next step is we're going to move over to back to our R script and we're going to, in fact, we'll load in our volcano data into a variable called volcano raw. And now we're going to take that raw data and we're going to save it to the volcano. We're going to make a couple of changes. We're just going to select the columns that we need. And the columns we need uh, are the volcano number, the, um, the primary volcano type, and the region. So we'll select those. And now if we look at our volcano data, it's much simpler and we can just work with that. Okay, so the next step is we need to do some basic counts just to see what values we have in these columns. So let's go back to our R script and we are going to uh, count, we're going to count our volcano type. Um, and we're going to use sort equals true so that the most frequently occurring volcano types appear at the top. And we'll again uh, look at that. So we have a volcano type, vol okay, strato volcano, volcano is. Okay, so this is interesting. It looks like uh, these two should normally, they're probably, um, really should be grouped together into the one kind of category of a stratovolcano. So we'll make a couple of changes just to simplify. And yeah, so for example, these three types should all really be one. Okay, um, excellent. Okay, let's go back and we'll make a change to our volcano data to uh, really take uh, each of those volcano types, and we want to reduce this one here to just the stratovolcano. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take that column, the primary volcano type, we're going to mutate it, which means we're changing it, we're going to take it and we're going to replace everything after the parenthesis, everything including the parentheses in fact, uh, we're going to replace it with just an empty string. So we can do that using uh, this kind of uh, expression. So what this is doing is it's saying uh, everything, including the first parenthesis, then everything, this, this uh, will match up to the end of the string uh, and uh, take all of that and replace it with an empty string. And we need to use these two, uh, two escape characters for this reason. So if we, if we just ran that, it would say incorrectly nested parentheses because this parenthesis actually has a special meaning in R. So we're just going to use like that. And if we have a look at our data now, so we go back down and do our counts, you can see that the stratovolcano is, is now part of the stratovolcano category. So they've all been sort of um, simplified. 
Now let's do the same thing. We'll just count our regions and see what we have in our regions. So count region. And again, we'll sort and then we'll look at that. So our regions, South America, Japan, Taiwan, Marinas. Okay. Um, excellent. What we need to do now um, is one more change, which is we're going to, so you notice here we have a lot of different types of volcanoes. 17 is a bit tricky to plot. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the top 10 categories and then with those top 10 categories, after that, we'll just turn everything into other. So to do that, we need to go back up to this line and we're going to add another mutate to change the column. And we'll just say mutate the primary volcano type. Now we use a function here called factor lump. And this takes a column and a number. So if we specify n equals 10, everything after the top 10 will be converted to uh, something called just other. It's just another category for everything else. So let's run that, come back down again, have a look at our volcano types. And now we can see that everything else uh, apart from these top 10 is under the category of other. Okay, excellent. So now let's start out by building a basic plot of the top volcano types. So plot the um, volcano type. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use ggplot. So we'll use ggplot, and we're gonna specify that our x-axis is the uh, primary volcano. Actually, wait a sec. We need to, first of all, before we do that, we need to count the primary volcano types. So count the primary volcano type. Um, and we're gonna save that to, our, let's save that to a variable. So volcano type counts. And we won't bother sorting it in this case because we don't need to. Um, okay, so there are our primary volcano type counts. Now we're gonna plot these. So the, we're gonna use ggplot. We're gonna specify that our x-axis is the primary volcano type. And our y-axis, which is the count, is n. And then we're going to use geomcol to turn it into a plot. So, uh, okay, so here's what our plot looks like. So it's a bit messy down here. If we expand this, we'll probably be able to see a bit better what's going on. Um, all right, there's a couple of things we need to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip coordinates so that these primary volcano types actually appear on the left-hand side. So we can do it like this. We can say uh, coord flip for flip coordinates. And if we run that command, we'll now see that uh, it's much easier to see what's going on because now we've got our count down here and we've got our primary volcano type on the left hand side. Okay, so the next thing we will do to make this a bit easier to see what's going on is we're going to sort our primary volcano type so that the most common appear at the top and the least common appear at the bottom. So to do that, we need to use a function uh, which will basically take these volcano types and sort them according to the count. So to do that, we need to go back and we need to add an additional mutate step just to change our column to mute. So basically take that and then mutate it. We're going to use fact, factor reorder, reorder to reorder them from most common to least common. We're going to specify our column again and we'll say that to order it by n. So we'll take that and then we'll plot that. And now it's much easier to see what is going on in our plot. So we have the primary volcano type and the count, and they are in descending order. And you'll notice that the other category, which is every other type of volcano, um, is, it keeps things nice and simple as well. Okay, so that's a nice-ish plot. Uh, however, we want to see the breakdown of different types of volcanoes by region. So just to remind you of where we are. So we've, we've loaded our data into R, we've done some basic kind of exploration, we've made a couple of changes. Um, in fact, we'll just remove these, these lines here where we're viewing the data just to keep things simple. Um, we've made a few changes, we generated counts, and our volcano data looks like this. Now, now we want to generate counts, but not just of the volcano type, we want to count the volcano type within each region. So we're gonna 
generate a new plot. So let's just leave a comment here to, to specify exactly what we're doing. So specify uh, volcano types by region. And we're going to generate counts again, but not just counting the primary volcano type, we're actually gonna count the region as well. So count the region and the primary volcano type, and we'll put that in a different variable. So volcano, uh, region, and type counts. Okay, so let's have a look at that variable. So what we have here is now we have the region and then the count of volcano types within that particular region. Now, let's take the code we used before to build our plots and we're gonna put that in the similar position. And again, we'll just try to reorder by the primary volcano type and see how that turns out. The only thing we're going to add is we're going to add a facet wrap and basically we are going to use region to say to split the graph, to split the plot into different uh, into different kind of subplots based on the region. So if we plot this, let's see what the results look like. So uh, you'll see that there's lots of lots of plots in this case. So there's the region, so Africa and Red Sea, Alaska, Antarctica, Atlantic Ocean, Canada, and so on. And then down the left-hand side, there are the different types of volcano. Okay, so this is a promising start. However, there are a number of things that really make this hard to look at. The first thing that makes it hard to look at is that depending on where you are, like different regions, different types of volcanoes are more prevalent. So for example, in Canada and the Western, and Western USA, um, really, uh, what's this? This is this be volcanic fields are the most common, and uh, strato volcanoes are a bit less common. Whereas if you go to Africa and the Red Sea, strato volcanoes are the most common. So we need to have different orders in each category. Uh, also, we have different scales in each case. So let's start out by changing our scales so that everything will fit a bit better. So to do that, we can use um, the uh, Actually, to, basically we go up to our facet wrap and then we specify scales equals three. And let's plot that to show you the difference that makes. So if we zoom in on the result, just one moment while this loads, uh, now we can see that actually it's, it's uh, removed in each case, it's removed the, uh, the counts, uh, the, the, the volcano types that weren't uh, present in that region. But we still have to sort differently depending on the region. So we are going to do that <clears throat> using a, a feature from the tidy text package. So <clears throat> uh, let's go back up to the top. We're going to load our tidy text package in and then we'll go back down again. So we'll load the tidy text package. Again, if you don't have the tidy text package installed, you can install it just using install.packages tidy text, as you can see I'm typing down here, and then run that. So once we've loaded the tidy text package into R, we're going to come back down here and we're going to use, instead of factor reorder, we're going to use the reorder within function, uh, which is taken from the tidy text package. So reorder within, and reorder within basically says we specify <coughs> the uh, the column that we are going to reorder, which is going to be our primary volcano type. And in fact, let me split this up into multiple lines just so that we can see what's going on. So there's our primary volcano type. We're going to split it by uh, something. So that's by, um, I think that's by the region. Um, uh, so by, by N, to, which specifies like you know, the, most, the most common to the least common. And then within, specifies within the region in this case. So if we run that, uh, now we should have a much clearer picture of the prevalence in different regions. Okay, so, uh, ooh. Okay, so it, it's, it's messed up the, the labels here. Uh, to fix that, what we need to do, we just need to come back down here and uh, specify, uh, um, scale x reordered uh, scale x reordered because we reordered this x axis remember that because they're flipped the x axis is actually the vertical okay so now um, there we go so now each each region is sorted 
All right, there's a couple of more changes we're gonna to make to this. So we're gonna just add labels. So we'll add labels. We're gonna specify that our X is our volcano type, volcano type, and our Y is the, uh, the, uh, the count of volcanoes. And then uh, we are going to add some color. We'll add some color. So we'll color by region. Now, if we just use color equals region, it actually won't work. So I'll show you why that won't work if we come back up and uh, have a look at that plot or we wait for that to generate. Um, yeah, you'll see basically that it's uh, it's messing up how it's filling it in the colors. But if we want to fix that, instead of having color equals, we use fill equals region. Fill equals region. And now that should generate a, a plot which is much closer to what we had before. There we go, okay. So now we have our regions, we have the type of volcanoes in those regions, and they're ordered from most common to least common. There's one more change we're gonna make. We're just gonna remove this legend here because it's taking up space that we don't need because everything is already specified up here. And to do that, we're just gonna go back to our geom col and we're gonna specify show.legend is false. Okay, and then we can generate, can run that. And we're almost done. When this finishes running, we can have a look at our final result. Okay, so here we go. Basically, here's our plot. And uh, we now have the counts of different types of volcanoes by region. So I hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, if this is something that you found helpful and uh, you'd like more content like this, then please let me know in the comments below. And um, yeah, take care. And I hope that you enjoy this.